Squad Championship, Marshall Sutcliffe with Paul Chion, and we're well and truly through the top eight here, Paul. We've really hit the first point of no return for our players. In the future match, in the lower round one, we have Zachary Keeney playing Is It Phoenix? And sitting across from him is Christian Hauk on Celestia Humans. But here's the thing, Paul, no more wiggle room. A loss here sends you home. And here's the other thing. A win for either of these players not only sends them further down in, through the lower bracket, it also sends them to the world championship. Yeah, I, I know top eight, making the top eight is a big deal, but this might be the biggest match for both of these players' careers, right? I mean, there's so much on the line for this one match. It's, it's, it's not just moving on, it's the fact that if you win, you're in Worlds. 100%. The, it, really, the stakes don't get higher at this stage of a tournament, right? Until we get to Worlds or ter till we're in the finals of one of these events. And let's see who's going to emerge. I think you saw Zachary Keeney take a very deep breath, gathering himself before embarking on his mission. Christian, on the other hand, looks very focused, right? Hand on chin, eagle eyes. He's ready to go. Let's see what happens between these two. Now, matchup wise, Paul. Very different approaches to the format. Christians on Celestia Humans looking for that low to the ground beat down approach with the disruption kind of attached to the humans. On the other side is Zachary Keeney, heavily graveyard based deck that is looking to uh, basically just cast a whole ton of spells and they get a bunch of free Arc Light Phoenix and such onto the battlefield. What, who do you like in the matchup, especially now that there's a Thalia down for Christian? You know, I think this matchup is incredibly close, just kind of coming in. I think a lot of it comes down to the types of ways that Hal can maybe interact with what Keeney's trying to do, right? You have some of those tax creatures that are really, really powerful in the matchup. Cards like Esper Sentinel and Thalia. On the flip side, Keeney's deck is well prepared for those creatures as well. Most of his removal costs one mana. We're talking about Unholy Heat, Lightning X, Spike Field as Hazard. He has no shortage of ways to deal with these creatures. And then the, the thing that this mono, excuse me, this Celeste Humans deck has trouble with are just a bunch of flyers. And Keeney is just maximizing on them. All of his creatures fly. You have the entities, you have the phoenixes, and you have these channelers. Yeah, things have gone well here for Keeney. He had the answer for Thalia with a Pillar of Flame. Then he even took a turn on the mana delayed Christian Hauk, shall we say? He missed his second land drop. He's hit it now. Uh, to just fading hope an Aspirant to send it back and keep the board entirely clear. That gave Keeney enough time to get a Stormwing Entity onto the battlefield, which he oh. now has. And look at this, this Finale of Promise for Keeney. He's going for it. Yeah, this is really aggressive here. Keeney just won, wanting to play the tempo game here, using the Finale as basically a bounce spell to get this... Uh, uh, to to get Christian to bounce this Edeline, but not only that, I mean, you're seeing a lot of extra damage here coming from the Stormwing Entity. Yeah, the prowess triggers really are adding up fast. Otherworldly Gaze here is going to just get put in the bin, which Six. is kind of where he wants it. Sprite Dragon on the bottom, and the two damage, don't forget, from the pillar. Remember, he got the sorcery and the instant there. Down to 12 goes Christian in one turn. Yeah, and I think this land... Really, really big here for Christian as it allows him to maybe try to keep up here. Probably is going to need to find some Brutal Cathars here yep. to get that Storming Entity off the battlefield. Every time this deck falls behind, which isn't always, right? A lot of times the, it's one, two, three, and the, the Celestia deck just sort of drops the hammer and never actually falls behind. But when it does, we're always talking about Collected Company into Brutal Cathar, uh, it's just kind of the, the one way that you really have to come back. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't... It seems to me that it's going to be really difficult for Christian to uh, win if he just plays the creatures out of his hand, right? I, I think it's just these right. flyers are going to be problematic. I mean, there's a good shot that this Channeler becomes a 3-3 flyer next turn. Yeah, and so Christian is going to say, all right, I'm going to have my collected company at the ready. He knows here in game one, he's going to be able to resolve his collected company. This one thing about Phoenix decks is that they aren't really well suited for counter spells is they really need to be able to proactively put spells on the stack to get back a Phoenix from the yard. So you'll see them run often zero counter spells. Maybe one will sneak in occasionally. 
and how trying to find the right timing here for collected company. There's going to be an opt-in response now from Kini. Kini really wants to find an unholy heat here, an instant speed way potentially to kill a brutal Cathar. Let's see if there is a Brutal Cathar coming. No, it's Esper Sentinel and Ranger Captain of Eos. A pretty mediocre hit here for Christian Hauk and certainly not what he wanted to see. Yeah, no Thalia either. So if Kini can find some spells here, can, can cast it here off that iteration. And Kini really wants to make, try to find a way to get Delirium here so it can get in for at least eight. This is Expressive Iteration resolving. Maybe the Consider could get him there. Uh, there's also um, Otherworldly oh. Gaze. Yep. Okay, but he's going with he's the... got that in his yard. And keep in mind, I mean, it's not like Kini has to win this turn, right? Right. If you, if you get in for eight or nine, and you're presenting three lethal attackers next turn, if you get Delirium here off the Channelers... That should get it done. And he's decided to keep Unholy Heat at the ready. That's going to get him in for six right now. Down to four falls Christian Hauk, and he is under extreme assault. He doesn't find anything off the top, but he has collected company number two in hand. And it's really going to come down to that. He may need to hit two, Cathar, two Brutal Cathars, oh. too. Yeah, I think Christian thinking it's extremely unlikely that he's going to be able to block with those creatures. Right. Gets gets in, knocks Kini down to 16. Yeah, but I mean, with this unholy heat that Kini has, I mean, Cathar is also not, not going to do it here necessarily. I guess if, I guess if Christian can find double Cathar and cast Collected Company, then he won't just die this turn. This is all, of course, assuming that the Chandlers become 3-3s. Three right. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. Ranger Captain of Eos is going to get sacrificed by Christian Hauk, attempting to shut down the ability for Kini to cast spells. Now, Kini does have a response, though. Otherworldly Gaze out of his graveyard. And can this Chandler dump enough stuff in the yard to get... He's got to be so, pretty favored here, right? I mean, you are looking yeah. at a lot of cards. <laughs> What's a lot missing? Of them are going creature? to the graveyard. It's, it's got to be creature that's missing here. Okay. This is the otherworldly gaze resolving. It's not going to put a card into hand here for Kini. Yeah, it's it's a one of in his deck that just allows him to just play a card that could potentially just turbocharge and put a bunch of phoenixes into the graveyard. He is going to get a pillar of flame though, but somehow the channelers did not get turned on. This is a lethal attack in the air with Stormwing Entity though, and both channelers are attacking as well. And keep in mind, if Christian uses Chop Down onto Entity, I think that's going to be the missing piece here yeah, to turn those right. Chandlers into 3-3s. Three oh, so I think insane. Company is the only line here if you're Christian. Let's see if Christian can hit. No, oh, it's nope. Ranger Captain of Vios, two other creatures, but no brutal Cathars. He had a chance to hit off of two collected companies and couldn't find any of it. So the aggressive line from Keeney pays off here. And he's able to kind of slam the door before Christian could really get out from under all of that pressure. Christian had a great hand, you know, stock uh, chock full of creatures. He was going to be able to really kind of empty it out over the next few turns because he finally caught up on mana. But you, it was you, way too late given Keeney's oh, line. I mean, just take a look at Keeney, just the intensity. I mean, he, he, oh, he, he's knows, healing it. He, he knows what's on the line here. He, he, he played incredible that first game, right? Going for that, you know, not value. Typically, when you cast a card like Finale of Promise, you're trying to go for value, right? Maybe try to get two cards. But he's like, no, that's not what I'm going to do. I want to try to put maximum pressure on you. Use this as basically a three-mana unsummon and try to maximize my damage. And it paid off for him. 
you can really get vibes from Keeney. You can see he's closing his eyes and focusing. You know, sometimes people call that like centering yourself, right? Where you like take a deep breath, close your eyes, kind of feel your surroundings. That can kind of bring you back down when, you, when you're feeling that really big pressure. And I, I think that's what Keeney's doing. But I'll tell you, he's playing beautifully. He went for that really aggressive line and it absolutely paid off. Let's get into game number two between these two and our lower final one, or excuse oh, me, our lower ooh. round one, Allenbach escort kicks things oh, off. Oh, Keeney's, Keeney's not going to be uh, too thrilled about this. Um, have to lead out with the storm curved uh, land there, coast. But it, had he kept up the river glide pathway, could have been able to dual shot these two creatures. Oh, that would have been devastating. But now the Luminarch Aspirant has a counter on it, and it has an escort to protect it here as well. So this is a tough position already. It looks like Keeney's gonna go for Dragon's Rage Channeler and just pass the turn back. He has Flame Blast Bolt at the ready. Yeah, excellent start here from Christian Hauk. I mean, so many huge threats that he needs to deal with. I mean, this is the ideal draw for if you're humans, right? One, wow. two, three, company. So far, everything's still on the battlefield. Keeney's really his only option is to, to bolt the escort or maybe just use the dual shard on the escort. You're probably just not going to get a two for one there. Good point. Yeah, he may as well. He might want to consider just sort of giving up on that. Oh, no, he can go for, excuse me. He can go for the dual shot because of the Adeline. You can go for dual shot, kill the one one that's attacking and also the, well, he could have if you didn't put the counter on Hauk the is just playing around everything here, <laughs> and that's going to force the Flame Blessed Bolt as it's going to take out the Escort. The Escort can sacrifice itself to give something per uh, indestructible. It also gets lifelink, so that could matter here. You know, every little yeah, bit of damage can, sure. can matter. So, And now the attack. Aileen grows now up to 3-4. Both of the creatures get in, down to 16 goes Keeney. He is under extreme assault here. And Hauk, it's gonna be a one, two, three, four curve right into collected company for Hauk. Yeah, and I mean, what, what are we hoping for if you're Keeney here? I guess a whiff, right? I mean, even just with what's on the board, it's gonna be pretty tough here for Zach. That's right. I, I think that part of the equation for Keeney is going to be a whiff from the Collected Company because, yes, he has both Dragon's Rage Channelers up in the air and attacking, and that's great, but he's not going to win this race, at least as it stands. Company time. Just run it out there, right? It grows yeah. to Adeline, yeah. Ranger Captain oh, Evios and Esper that is, Sentinel. That is not bad. Not the yeah. best. He hit Not two bad. creatures. <laughs> That's yeah. pretty much it. It wasn't a whiff. That's right. And now he gets to resolve the trigger here from Ranger Captain and see if there's anything in particular he wants. He's going to get a second copy of Esper Sentinel. That's going to really punish Zachary Keeney because he knows, you know, Christian knows. I, I'm forcing Zachary to do a whole bunch of stuff. So these Sentinels are going to do good work and he's already got one on the battlefield. Yeah. And this is, it's really interesting to see where Hauk is going to go with this counter. You might be tempted to put on, put it on the Esper Sentinel, right? You turn that mm -hmm. into a Toon 2, all of a sudden, um, you know, that tax becomes really problematic. You can turn Aspirant right. into a 3-3 three, three and just attack, right? And go, hey, look, I'm happy to trade my Aspirant for your Channeler. That minimizes the chance that I lose to your Flyers and I still have action backup. Yeah, if he does go for that plan, it gets kind of interesting because then Dual Shot can take out you know, two smaller creatures, and Adeline's shrunk down a bit from that point. Right. But he's going to go for the Luminarch Aspirant. Maximum aggression here from Christian Beat Howell. downs. Beat downs. I mean, you go for the trade here, you're still taking eight, right? Mm-hmm. And, and you, I mean, you, maybe you can try to take less damage and go for the dual shot, but then Christian draws a card. You do get a card, at, yeah. And you could take the Sentinel and a 1-1 one, one out, or you could take the two 1-1s one, out. They do make Adeline a lot smaller, and then with the block as well, but yeah, this is still going to hurt. There's really no clean way to get out of this for Keeney. 
Here comes Dual Shot, and it's going to be the Esper Sentinel. It's also going to be one of the one ones. Yeah, that if means he was going to card's going to go into if, hand. If he was going to do this, I like casting this before blocks because then you get to see what kind of removal spells you might have on top. Mm. Uh, to see if maybe you can actually just block the one one with your channeler and not the aspirant. And what did uh, Christian find? Just a land. Ah, he's just going to take out the other one one. So a lot of damage, though. Seven damage coming across here, and it's getting towards miracle All time right. here for Keeney. We get a lot of looks, though. We have two yeah. dragons rage channelers and opt in a faithless looting. So there is a, a there is some. Uh, Awesome sequences here we might see involving uh, uh, Arclight Phoenix here. A lot of them. Yeah, a lot of looks. Ooh. That's one. There's one, Paul. Okay. That's stage one. Spike Field Hazard, no great targets. Sprite Dragon. Ugh. No great targets, but it does cost one, right? He does. He right. has an opt-in a Spike Field Hazard. So he'll get at least that Phoenix spells. back. Right, so you go with the opt here first. Maybe you hit another Phoenix? Maybe. So far, it's an <laughs> island. I don't think you want that. Yeah, worth noting as well that the channelers, when they're in this dragon mode, must attack each turn if able. Correct. He's just going upstairs with the hazard. I mean... That yeah, means so, 10 damage this turn. Right, okay. Phoenix, and maybe another Phoenix. Phoenix. This is the... Oh. Really need that. We're going to see a defensive Phoenix here. He's got to attack with the two channelers here. But he can still keep the Phoenix back on defense to not just die to what Christian has. You can put the Phoenix in front of the Adeline. And then, let's see, you have the Aspirant, the Ranger Captain, and a 1-1 one -one token, plus a counter from the Aspirant. So we're looking at eight damage that would come through next turn from Christian Hauk. See what Christian finds. Thraben Inspector is his draw step for the turn. Okay. He so can't you, quite you, oh, get through for Lethal. You, you want to go Inspector because you can find the Thalia's, uh, Thalia's Lieutenant, right? And that would be the mm. game. So you want to crack the clue here. <clears throat> to see if you draw Thali's Lieutenant. I believe a Luminarch Aspirant might also get it done. It was a collective okay. company, and that doesn't get it done here, but that wasn't bad. So, I mean, this means that Keeney is <laughs> going to live. He's going to go yes. down to one, I think. And he would have three, six, nine from the Phoenix if it's able to come back, plus an additional would be 12. Right, but keep in mind, Christian Hauk has a Ranger Captain of Eos in play. He's cracking that bad boy on Zetkini's upkeep to prevent Arclight Phoenix from coming back next turn. Boy, that, that Ranger Captain's a real buzzkill, isn't it? Just the he wet blanket have, of the party. He should have more than enough to attack with next turn here. Absolutely. Down to one. The Ranger Captain should seal the deal here for Christian Hauk. He sacrifices it on upkeep, and Keeney can't even respond. Has no instance, draws an op for the turn, and that's going to yeah. be GG to Christian Oof. Hauk, able to capitalize off of a great start to the game there and continued his way through for the game win. And that, of course, is going to even things up at one game apiece between Keeney and Hauk with, oh, you know, a world's just... invite <laughs> on the line right now. I, th this swing here is just incredible for one game of Magic. It's go home... <laughs> Or keep your hopes alive to become a, a champion today and qualify for Worlds. Yeah. Wow. This is... Would expect nothing less than to have this go to a Game 3. And, uh, you know, you get to... Kini needs to center himself. Remember, he's now on the play. Imagine how different the sequence of that game would have gone had Kini gone first. He would have had the dual shot for the combination that Hauk had when he went one drop, two drop. So... So yes. he's got to be feeling good here. But of course, so, so much on the line here. World Championship invites are, you know, those are one of the biggest goals in any season, right? When you start, I think that, you know, there's all the normal stuff. I'd love to win, you know, a big tournament. I'd like to, you know, but I think that if you asked most players 
like these two it just said, okay, it's the beginning of the season. What are your goals? They'd say, I like, I want to play in world championship. Yeah. Like, that's, that's, if I do that, then I know I had a great season. And, you know, oh. to be fair to both of these players, they've accrued a lot of points this weekend yeah. towards that goal. So, you know, it, it doesn't mean that they will not get to play. It's just, boy, locking it up here in the first oh. big event of the season would be amazing. Oh, this dual shot. If Christian goes lieutenant, Ooh. this dual oh. shot's going to be amazing. And with a land off the top, like, does oh. Christian really have the ability well, to just be I don't like, think I'm you can not going to do I don't anything? think you can, aff you can afford to. Now, Christian's going to draw a card, but hey, for you to have an empty board and for me to be able to dual shot here... Oh, no, he won't draw a card. He can pay the one. Oh, oh Christian. look at this. Look at Christian Hauk just passing the Post turn. Post-combat. <laughs> Check out the big brain on Christian. Oh, man. And he's going to get uh, And this yeah. is this devastating is for Christian Hauk. He puts his hands to the sky. Oh, jeez. Was that his world championship invite evaporating. I, sometimes it can come down to one play. Yeah. And I mean, that, that was gigantic. And, and he knows, I mean, Keeney's playing two copies of this in his sideboard. And that's why he went with that attack first, right? He's like, look, I'm going to do a mini hedge here, but it doesn't matter. If you have the dual shot, I'm in serious, serious trouble. Here comes Channeler into Faithless Looting. There's already one Arclight Phoenix in hand here for Keeney. He doesn't see another though it's a pair of lands and that's kind of the business it oh, does that's... although turn the dragon's rage channeler on it's a 3-3 flyer now though it looks how... like it's going to get apparitioned right out of here oh, God, but look at these lands here from how 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 i mean we talked about it before it hasn't happened much in this tournament but he just needs lots of collected companies hey. here both players are floody. Now, one of them has access to cards like Expressive Iteration and the other doesn't, but still, like, Keeney just iterationed into Land Land Iteration. Yeah. Oh, and there's a collected company off oh, the top here for how. That's exactly that's what, needs what he to happen. <laughs> I don't... The question is when. Yeah, it's interesting. You're, you can't pump the Apparition in any way. But at the same time, if you company, you do want to make sure that you do get a Thali on the battlefield, an Esper Sentinel on the battlefield before right. it's Keeney's turn. Okay. Oh, oh no. Christian Hauk just running oh. terrible here. He finds awful. only Esper Sentinel off of it. Oh, and Zachary man. Keeney thanks the magic gods there. And look at that. <laughs> even finds a spike field hazard straight away for the Sentinel. Interesting. I wonder if he wanted to kill the Sentinel first but now he's got a storming entity here and how just drew another land by the way yeah off that sentinel trigger hey if keeney wants to give him oh. free cards and they're just a bunch of lands he's going to be fine with that they're storming entity hitting the battlefield now unholy heat fading hope so lots of interaction good, good now birds. for keeney and we're going to need to see another collected company come off the top of the library right quick here for Christian Howard. Well, he gets one two draw. at times, not oh, going to do it. There's an Adeline. That's one of his most powerful up. options. Yeah, but can't attack. No. Not this turn. And there's Unholy Heat and a Fading Hope coming up as well for Zachary Keeney. He put that Unholy Heat on top of his library before. And Keeney does have Delirium, so he can kill yes. this Adeline. Things looking really good for Zachary Keeney to secure a seat at the World Championship. Christian Hauk, this could not have gone worse for him yeah, in game I mean... three. There's an only heat to heal, kill Adeline, and it's a 6-6 six, six Stormwing Entity plus an Arclight Phoenix. Nine damage coming in here. And you can see that Keeney, rather than play Op for the oh? extra damage, is going to leave okay. up. Okay. You know, but that's Collected Company. <laughs> Is there a chance here for Christian Hauk? Uh, it involves finding some removal creatures, right? It involves some number of apparitions and brutal cathars to be found here. He does bring in four Skyclave apparition and has three brutal cathar main. It's a lot of hits and he's a decent chunk of the way through his library. 
Now keep in mind the apparition cannot remove the Stormwing Entity. I know it costs two to cast most of the time, but it is a five drop. Oh, that's brutal. But there is an Arclight Phoenix, and here it is. Collected company from Christian Halkin. He sees uh, Ranger Captain Thalia and Thraven Inspector. This is on Zachary's upkeep. So that's not going to deal with these creatures immediately, right? Uh, right? You can go Ranger Captain, go fetch yourself a giant killer. And that does mean that Keeney cannot play a spell before choosing to attack. Right. Keeney's going to uh, have to settle turns. for three damage, and then if he ever does cast a spell, he risks losing his entity. And I think it's you know not realistic to think that he could go the rest of the game. I, it, it just seems it just seems that Z Zach's just too far ahead on the race here. It does seem that yeah, the flying on the other side just means that Hauk's creatures can simply look upwards and watch a whole bunch of damage sky in. Oh, no giant killer. Yeah, it looks like it's no giant killer here. Okay. So it's going to have to be Ullenbach Escort, Thraven Inspector, or if he'd like... Well, he's going to go with Thraven Inspector here. Right, and, and now, I mean, we're looking at... We're looking at... If Zach can attack in for two more points of damage here, potentially, mm -hmm. then we're looking at three lethal attackers next turn. Oh, excuse me. No longer has the Larry as the Phoenix is in play. Right. But he's close. He's going to go with Fading Hope to bounce Thalia. He okay, sees that's, Consider. That's, just, He'll that's, take that's that. more damage. Yeah, not quite free, but D. close as you're going to get to free. Here comes Opt. That'll get the Consider in hand. So we're now looking at eight damage here. Boy, he's getting close, isn't he? Nine with the consider. He hits a phoenix. No. Didn't hit. A I guess you could still heat a. You could still hit a phoenix. No. It's gonna be a land, though. You could still hit a phoenix. You, now you could definitely <laughs> still hit a phoenix. Faithless looting. He can just cast it. Yeah. And mill himself. It's already almost lethal it's here. Ten damage. If he hits a Phoenix here, it'll be over. Oh, and there's an there Arclight Phoenix. He there actually it did it. Zachary Keeney is going to finish the match on this very turn. All Christian Howe can do is simply look oh, on as goodness. Zachary Keeney takes his seat at the World Championship. Congratulations to Zachary on an incredible run here. And as I mentioned, He's not done. There's still a tournament to win today. <laughs> he just grabbed, though, a very, very important seat.